Um, I'm very excited to come and speak to you about um, the perfect state of righteousness again this morning. And I believe that what I'm going to speak about this morning is really going to help you. It's really going to help you to come into a state of living in harmony with God. And uh, I'm going to speak about a concept on our 48th program called the Upward Spiral. And so last week we spoke about the formation of a whirlwind and how we get into the eye of the storm. And then we looked at how heaven meets earth. And when heaven meets the earth, that's when the breakthrough takes place. Hallelujah. And um, we also looked at how to come to that exact position or state where we reach all the conditions that is needed to be able to be in a place where we can be in harmony with God. Hallelujah. But today we're going to look at what I call the upward spiral. And uh, that is something that God revealed to me in an amazing way that will help you to, to grow up into a place where instead of going into a downward spiral, you can go into an upward spiral. So let's just pray and ask the Lord to come and reveal himself to us this morning. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your love for us, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the gospel. Thank you for the power of the gospel, Lord. And I pray, Father, this morning that we will begin to realize how to enter into a place of the upward spiral, Lord, Father. Thank you, Jesus, you paid the price that we could come into that place where it will just go better and better and better with us in Jesus' name. Thank you for your anointing that come to teach people and take them into a deeper place with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so I want to speak about an upward spiral. What is an upward spiral? You know, we know a downward spiral. We know when things are kind of spinning out of control and things are just getting worse and worse and worse. Then it's going down into a downward spiral. But God showed me something. He says, I want to take you into what I call an upward spiral. So one day as I was praying outside, literally a sign appeared to me of clouds that made a spiral that was going upwards. And as I saw this spiral, I said, Lord, what does this mean? And God said to me, you know a downward spiral, but I'm going to give you an upward spiral. Hallelujah. So would you like to know what the upward spiral is? And um, so it's going to come from a place and in a way that you never expected. If we look at Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Paul makes an amazing statement. And he says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is of Christ, for it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident surrender and a firm reliance to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith disclosed to the way of faith that arouses more faith. Hallelujah. As it's written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. So Paul is making this powerful statement and that's exactly what we are looking at. We are looking at coming into a state of righteousness. And Paul makes a statement and he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, today, I think a lot of Christians are kind of ashamed of the gospel. They, they do not see the power of the gospel operating in their lives. They feel like they are victims of their circumstances and things are going wrong. And I believe God wants to begin to restore in these last days the power of the gospel to the church again, that it will operate in a way that we've never seen it operate. And as Jesus promised us, it would operate. And so he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The word gospel means the good news. Hallelujah. So there is good news that God wanted to give us. It's not bad news. It's not dry or bright. It's not going to heaven or going to hell. Hallelujah. It is actually, there is good news. And this good news is going to set you free. 
That's what it's really going to be all about to get into a perfect state of righteousness. And he says, for in, he says here, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is God's power working unto salvation to everyone who believes. So there's something you need to believe. You need to believe something. And when you believe it, there's going to be power in the gospel. Now we can all say, well, we believe, but I believe we have not really gone into the upward spiral. Now here comes the upward spiral in verse 17. He says, for in the gospel, in the good news, there is something, there was a mystery that was hidden in the good news. A righteousness which God ascribes is revealed. Wow. So what does that mean? In the next few weeks, we're going to go deeper and deeper into this righteousness of God. We spoke about the doctrine of righteousness a while ago. And now we're going to begin to go into the doctrine of righteousness and what it means. So go back to the former programs and you will begin to understand just how we, we are building a case. And as we are building this case, it's going to help you to understand, wow, this is really what the Bible is saying. You know, we've been preaching a lot of things, but are we really preaching the gospel? Are we really, do we really know what Paul the Apostle was preaching about? And here he says, listen, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because there's power in the gospel. Because in the gospel, a righteousness is revealed that is from faith to faith. Hallelujah. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean that the gospel goes from faith to faith? I want to explain this to you. You know, when you got saved and when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what did you do to be able to get forgiveness for your sins? And the answer is nothing. You believed. You believed God. You received what God has paid for you. Yes, you said, Lord, I'm sorry about my sins. I'm sorry about what I've done in the past. But ultimately, you have to receive by faith what Jesus has paid for you on the cross. He paid for you that he can set you free and wash away all your sin. Hallelujah. And he made you right with God again. He put you in what we call right standing with God. There was nothing separating you from God anymore. Hallelujah. And so Paul says, listen, this is, a, this is what makes the, the gospel so powerful, is the fact that there's a righteousness that is revealed in this gospel. Now, what is this righteousness that's revealed? We're going to look at that in a lot of detail because I believe that very, very few people really understood what was meant by this righteousness that is revealed? And he says, this righteousness is from faith to faith. So when you started off receiving the truth of the gospel, you received it by faith. You believed God and you said, thank you, Father. Thank you. You know, I just feel that just by saying that. Thank you, Lord. We freely receive from God what he has paid for us on the cross. Hallelujah. It's nothing you could have done. The Bible says, Jesus is knocking at the door and all you have to do is to open the door. And if you open the door, he will come in and he will sup with you and he will meet with you. Hallelujah. But you know what happens when we get into the door? We start to work. We start to try and show God that we are now going to live a holy life. But Paul says something amazing. He says, no, this is a righteousness that is from faith. That's where you start. And it is to faith. Hallelujah. Now, when we look at salvation, uh, Romans chapter 10 is the, is the verse in verse 8 that talks about our salvation. He says, but what does this say? The word, God's message in Christ, is near you. It's on your lips and in your heart. The word or the message of faith that we preach. So Paul is saying, listen, these words are not something difficult. It is on your heart and it's just on your lips, just by speaking it, by confessing it, and by acknowledging and receiving it in your heart, God says you'll be saved. Verse 9 says, Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart believe, adhere to, trust in, and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. For with the heart a person believes, adheres to a trust in and relies on Christ, 
and so is justified. And that word for justified is made righteous. Hallelujah. So the moment you said, Lord, I receive. Lord, I declare, Father, I was a sinner. Lord, my life was full of sin. I need a savior. I need someone to wash me clean of all my sins. And God says, I've paid for you. Through Jesus Christ, my son, I paid for you. And that moment you say, thank you, Lord, I receive. That moment when you confess it, that moment when you receive it in your heart, he says, for with the heart a person believes and is justified. Hallelujah. So that's how simple it is. By simply believing it, God justifies you. And that word for justified, we've looked at that in the past, is just as if I'd never sinned. And another word for justified is right standing with God or being acceptable to God. Hallelujah. You are pleasing God. And so he says here, and with the mouth we confess and we openly declare and speak out freely this faith and confirms his salvation. So when I begin to speak what is in my heart, I confirm the truth. And God says, that's how you got saved. Hallelujah. That's how everything started. And so that is the way that we began with faith. So Paul says, listen, this gospel is from faith to faith. And now we want to look at what does it mean to go to faith. What does to faith mean? Now, as I begin to walk my life with the Lord, as I begin to live my life with the Lord, I cannot stop living by faith. And we're going to look at future programs a lot at how to live by faith. That is the key to the New Testament. If we live by faith and not by sight, if we live by faith, we will continue to walk in a place of God's righteousness. Did you know that God did not just give you righteousness once in your life? The day you got saved. And now you're getting more dirty and dirty and dirty and dirty every day when you live your life again. No. As a matter of fact, the Bible says God's mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. If you begin to believe this, you actually by faith begin to receive a new kind of place. We're going to look at that in Romans chapter 6, where it says you are going to become a new kind of slave. And that's a slave of righteousness. And so when I get into God's righteousness, I get into the, the bottom part of this upward spiral. But as I begin to continue believing God, continue receiving the righteousness that he has given for me, daily living in it, hallelujah, daily making sure that I stay in the righteousness of God. As long as I come into a state of righteousness, then I'm pleasing God then I am right with God. Hallelujah. And so for today, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will just bring you into that place again. If you've never received Jesus yet, then you can receive him by just believing in your heart that he wash away your sins, he wash away your past, and your past is truly gone. God says, I remember your sins no more. Hallelujah. That is good news. Hallelujah. But now that you begin to live your Christian life, for those who have already lived their life for many years, they feel like, oh, I've messed up again. I've messed up so much. I feel like God cannot hear my prayer anymore. God says today, today if you hear my voice, come back into my righteousness. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for your love for people. Thank you, Jesus, that we can come into that upward spiral of your righteousness. By faith, Lord, we receive right now again, Father, all things. God just speaks to me right now and he says to me, people have fallen into religion and religion has made you feel like I need to serve God. I need to be holy. I need to go to church. I need to read my Bible. I need to pray every day. And because of these things, when we don't do them, we feel like we are not good enough. We feel like well, we just can't measure up. But God is saying that is religion. But 
we always say, well, we need to be in a relationship, but we don't know what it means. We need to walk by faith, and that's what it means. It means to, to say, God, I receive my perfect righteousness again today. Hallelujah. Woo! I just finished presence as God is saying today for you who feel far away from God, who feel out of sync with God, today, right now, God is giving you His righteousness. And as you receive it, thank you, Father, He's immediately restoring you back to perfect right standing with Him again. Again, hallelujah. I call it to be born again, again, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that some people are going to get born again, again today, Father. They're going to be washed again. And they're going to say, wow, I can take all these burdens off for me. And I can walk into your righteousness. I can freely walk into it. Hallelujah. And I pray right now, Father, that from today on, they will walk in a new place of staying in your righteousness. And that they can begin to experience all the promises that are theirs. But it's only theirs in Christ. Hallelujah. That is in His righteousness. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can receive that beautiful place, that good news that says, Wow, I don't have to go into a downward spiral. But I can go into an upward spiral today. But things are just going better and better and better. You know, every time you make a mistake, you can get back there and you can say, God, thank you for your righteousness. I'm going to learn again. I'm going to overcome this thing. But thank you that every time you're putting me back into right standing. You know, Jesus made an amazing statement one day. Peter asked him, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother if he sins against me? Seven times a day? And I think Peter thought, well, I'm really justified by asking that question. That's really a, a good question to ask. Seven times a day, if someone sins against you, I will forgive him. I think that's good enough. And I think Jesus started laughing and he says, no, Peter, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Woo, hallelujah. And I believe God is saying to me right now, there are so many people that have felt cut off from God. And God says, Right now, you can receive it. If you can believe this, you can receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can receive, we can turn back into righteousness again this morning. And as we go back into your righteousness, Father, all the burdens of separation from you is immediately removed again. And we are in a place of joy again. We're in a place of acceptance again, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for having joined us in this program. And uh, if you want to follow us, come back to our program on Patmore Studio. And uh, we also have a Telegram channel called Patmore Studio. And if you come to Patmore Studio on, channel, uh, on Morningstar at Patmore Studio, then you can follow us and go to former programs. And there you can ask your questions if you want to know more. Hallelujah. Amen.